It's PDQ Live. On a back. Hey, everybody. Welcome to PDQ Live. Uh, we're talking about Windows updates. Yes. I, I like this one. So we've had the, the cumulative updates that come out on Patch Tuesday. We've had those for some time. I like mm -hmm. those, but we've always gotten requests of, hey, can, can you do more? Mm -hmm. And we hadn't. And can Ch we now? We can because Chad. Is the man. Ch Ch Chad came in and he said, all right, I'm going to make this happen. And he built mm -hmm. out a whole bunch of stuff. So there's kind of two parts to this. We have the the base that what Chad built out that will work in both connect and deploy. Mm -hmm. But then I want to go into using inventory so we can track and use inventory reporting get kind of, so you get a better understanding of what you're missing. Is it going to use PowerShell? Absolutely. Yeah, PowerShell. your favorite. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, to start off, if we go to deploy here, that's not deploy. Uh, we have a bunch of new packages that should be in the library already. Uh, they should start with PS Windows Update. Mm -hmm. uh, these top five, I want to say five, can I count? Five, mm -hmm. yeah. These so ones, wait, I have to download these all right if I don't have yes, them in there. I'm going to yes, go these download be, them. In the package library, you got to download those. Okay. Uh, so the, these top five, as you can see, they got the little arrow thing. That means mm -hmm. if we make change to them, they'll update automatically, but they're kind of static. They're Kay. just auto-download packages. Okay. This last one is set as a standard package, and the reason we have it as that is because this one is, if there's a specific KB, like say mm -hmm. there's a zero day or there's a security update that you want to specify a single KB, mm -hmm. you can specify that here, but where that's a variable we can't control, we have this one as just standard. A, a standard, so you can come in here and update the KB you're looking to install. Because I'm going to change a value in this one. Okay, got it. So what's the first one we're going to do? So the first one we have here, and this is with, uh, and this is mostly for, well, works well with Connect, is the Git package, which is not installing anything. It's going to go out to a machine and tell you what it's missing. Ooh, okay. Uh, so this, if I send this to a machine, it's going to tell me every update that it needs. It will, yes. I would prefer oh. inventory for this, but where Connect's inventory is a little bit different as of now, we have this one as an option, so it still works with Connect, and then... All right, yeah. so let's see what it does. So this is like audit only, it's just an information. Yeah. And all of these are just using the module PS Windows Update. Okay. Uh, if if you're concerned about the computer having the PS Windows update, these mm -hmm. packages contain the thing to said, make sure, does it have it? If not, it makes sure it has the proper provider, in this case, NuGet, and then it installs the module. Okay. So part of this package will set the PowerShell module so you can get that okay. to work. All right, but we're just going to deploy this once, and I, oh, I actually haven't run this with inventory. The first time is a little bit slow on the loading the collections, and we'll get okay. up to that. So uh, I'm going to be safe and run this one just to make sure I'm not going to break a whole bunch of stuff. So well, I just want to take a peek at it. It just lets you see what you're missing. And yeah. then we'll go over what the packages do. We'll, we'll do, uh, I'm not going to do Charles McGill because uh, JJ will unmute himself to yell at me. Let's do cool, cool cat. Do, cool, cool cat. Yeah. So this one's going to go through doing the, uh, the Git. Okay. Uh, while it's running, we'll kind of go down to each one of these do. Okay. So the first one we have is, this one's just an install. This one basically says... Do the same thing, get what updates are missing, and just install everything. Blindly, though. Yeah, so okay. if, if you're not worried about it, you just want to make sure everything's patched. This mm -hmm. one is fantastic. You can set that on a schedule just to say, hey, every night at 1 a.m., mm -hmm. just see if any machine needs an update and update all of it. I'm kind of a chicken, so I probably won't, wouldn't do that one, but yeah. okay, yeah, without so knowing. The other one goes down, and it specifies if it is labeled as critical or a security update. Okay. Then it will do that one instead of everything. Okay. Uh, that we have one for drivers for Microsoft driver only drivers. Yep. Okay. Uh, this is the feature update one that we're talking about. Okay. And this one, there's the enable. There's two different versions of feature updates. You got the enablement package. So within a core update, there's several features already built in. Ne the enablement package goes through and it says, "I right, unlock these and allow them." Mm -hmm. At a certain point, it goes to a new block and the enablement package doesn't work. Mm -hmm. But this, I think, this will help out with that version of it. Okay. And the last one is this one is if you want to target a specific KB. Ooh, so like if I have a zero day and I'm looking for a specific KB that's super scary, this would be the one I want. Yes. Ooh, okay. Yep. So we did the get one. We're going to open up the log here, and you can see CoolCat is missing quite a few KBs. Oh, okay. Just from that one. So this is outside of we have done the things like the cumulative updates, uh -huh. but there's just things outside of that that we are missing security. Uh, you see you got some VMware, VMware ones in there. So now, Jordan, can I just stop you? If I wanted to just run a certain KB, could I just copy the KB right from here and then put it in that other one that's looking for a specific KB? Yep. So let's do one, a, s a small one here. Okay. Just 74 kilobytes. Don't want that space. We're going to grab that KB. Okay. And go into, we have to open up the package to do a quick modification. Uh, right here, the KB article is already defined. 
we just change the number within there. You want to make sure you keep the quotes. I'm going to save that, and we're going to... Now that we save that with the single KB we're looking for, okay. we're going to deploy that to... Who did I run the get on? Cool Cat? Cool Cat. So I've just watched your patch Tuesday, and you say, this one's really scary. I'm going to go alter this. I'm going to go send this to whatever computers I need to that I'm scared about. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah, so if there's a, okay. a zero day or something new that you found out about, mm -hmm. or it's, it's just a good way uh, to make sure you have all those up to date. So in this case... If you knew a certain KB is there and you didn't mm -hmm. want to worry about whether they have it or not, you could specify this one KB, mm -hmm. deploy that to all your machines, and if it doesn't have it, it will update it for you. Awesome. Now, I'm guessing after I run this, I'm going to also run the get all again and see if it ran it. Is that a way to check it? That's probably a good idea. Well, that one's running and successful. So if we go in, we'll make sure it did run. I mean, okay. successful is usually a good sign, right? Yeah, that and sounds good. There's a lot of verbose in there. It installed one update. Okay. But we're going to come in here and redeploy the git and make sure that one is missing. Okay. Uh, where am I at here? Redeploy that. And then that KB should yep. be gone from it. Yeah. And we'll confirm that works. And then okay. we're going to send it over to you so you can showcase the connect side of things to see how that kind of works. Okay. But that one, so the specific KB isn't native in connect. You have to do a little bit of work for that one, but the other ones are in there. Yes. But we'll go over that. Okay. All right. Uh, so see, that looks like it's going to take a bit for that to come run. Come on. Did we have any questions come in while the gets running? <clears throat> you ready? Yes, we did. Right. Here we go. Just one moment here. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm almost ready. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Yeah. Let's. Thank you. All right. I'm not Kelly here, guys. Maybe I'm not. Well, yeah. definitely not Kelly. Yeah. Gosh dang it. That's Sorry, not I just it. read it. It's all right. F11. All right. Lies. Oh, uh, <laughs> lies. lies. All right, so the, the gist of it would WSS still has value. <laughs> Super lies. Uh, I, I, all right, sorry. so the not. gist of it, can you just read the question to me? Because you. Oh, yeah. Would WSS still be useful to have in your environment for catching updates and the report? So uh, if you're looking to remove WSS completely, would work. WSS still could have value for uh, things like uh, WSS, you can approve or disprove different updates. Yeah. So if you wanted to, the PS Windows update, it actually has a flag in there where you can specify to use WS, uh, WSS or use online. So mm -hmm. if you want to use WSS as kind of the control to say, I approve these ones, I don't approve these ones, you can modify these scripts to then say, look at the WSS instead of trying to go around it. And then your WSS, all of the stuff within there would mm -hmm. still uh, impact that way. If you're looking to remove WSS completely, you want to remove that flag and just go online. Well, and the other thing is you can have multiple WSS servers set up to help with the bandwidth. So you can pull down the, the updates yep. and then cache them so you're not continually pulling it. So do we want to look at that oh, we'll before we sure. go to... Well, I'm going to go back in and make sure I remember the... See, 2170. 2170, oh, okay. Go back in there and... Uh oh I think you did the... I'm not sure you did the right one, though, Jordan. I didn't? I don't think so. What did I do? Oh, no. What do you uh, mean by the right one? We, we need to run GitHub. Oh, that one was the install. Yeah. Okay, I, think it was I, was, the I didn't open yeah. the right output yeah. log. Okay. 2170 Yay, is missing on that ran. one, so it did okay, update. Good. All right, so if okay. I actually have to I open up the output log show and I did install 2170. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's hand of me. All right, so okay. that's how that works. Uh, now we want to show it in Connect, which. I believe this is this is your baby. Yep. Okay. So connect is it has the same things. It's a little different. So I'm just going to start by going to packages, and then we're just going to search. We'll just do PS Windows. And so you see, we have five. They're really similar. So for this one, I'm just going to click on the get all applications. So it's the same thing. This would just be oops. And of course, I'm going to do it wrong first because why wouldn't I? This is just what is missing. So I'm going to hit deploy. And we'll just do it to, what do we want to do it to? Hopper. By the way, Brock, I'm going to have to hurt you for adding things that are outside of Hawkins in here. So I'm just going to pick my device and then hit deploy. And then this one's a little different. So now I have to hop over to deployments, or you can drill down to the device itself, either one. And so if I hit deployments, you'll see that it's going. <laughs> And so well, while that is running, mm -hmm. so you see the gets running. We did a question in there: Does connect replace deploy? So, no, uh, connect isn't as feature rich. Deploy has years mm -hmm. of stuff built out to it. Connect mm -hmm. is it offers a lot of uh, similar use, and it just supplies an agent. So, yeah. if, if you're looking for an agent-based solution, 
connect is definitely the way to go. Yeah. Or if you're still fine going agentless, you're not going to get the same features with connect yet, yeah, but right. they're adding stuff fast all the time. So for this one, I can open it up this way and I can drill down and see the script. But if I want to see, actually, I can't remember how to get into that thing right now. I scroll all the way down. Oh, I'll, I got to mention this. This package does not work on an on a air gap network. I forgot to say that. We forgot to mention that. Well, that, ma that makes sense just because mm -hmm. the module, it has to pull down from online as mm -hmm. well as it's looking at online search. Yeah. Now, if you had, I don't know, WSOS within the air gap wouldn't work either. Like yeah. if you had something to point to and it was all yeah. contained in there and you just manually updated those settings across mm -hmm. the air gap, it would technically work, but yeah. then you're still doing such a manual process. It's, yeah. it's not going to. And the other way, I actually don't want to forget this. The other way to go back in here and I went to, where did I go? To Hopper, right? So I can come back in here go to Hopper and then come down to deployments in here too and click on it this way. So I can do it both ways and then it brings out the output log here. And if I scroll to the bottom, it'll tell you the same information. So it just looks a little bit different in Connect. Same yep. process, it just looks kind of different. Yep. And then the other thing that I like about Connect, and I think this is actually a little easier in Connect, is say I want to automate this. I can come in here and click on automation. And you see, I already made one just for time sake because I knew we were going to have a lot of information. So if I click on here, I set one of these up to go every week and recur. So I chose the driver only one. So I just picked a name and I click down here. And I'll just show you how you do it if you pick, you guys spell it right. Here's my Windows update. So I could pick any of these and I already, I grabbed the package. I decided to pick the driver one and then it'll automatically grab the latest version and we'll update that for you. Then I come down here and I say, I want to recur. I did it once every week and I picked 2 a.m. because I like 2 a.m. and I want to do Wednesdays. Okay, and then I picked Hawkins as my group. You can pick whatever group you want. See, I would do not Hawkins. So you update all of Brock's stuff at whenever you want. Yes, we're going to obviously break Brock's stuff. But I think it's really easy and connect to automate this to stuff. Automate. And that's what I would do. And I'll do the update. So yeah. there is one package that was in deploy that's not in connect. And yes. that is the specific KB. Yes, but you're going to show how to make that. Yes. So the, the reason for that is all of the auto download packages are what have cross compatibility. The ones that are standard where it requires customization. That is not in connect yet, but it is very easy to make. Okay. In fact, I think I did make it, but I don't remember what I named it. Yeah. Is it Pick Pick? <laughs> that sounds like something you'd make. <laughs> so we'll, ju we'll, just, uh, we'll just make a new one. We're going to name this one KB since that's what the search wasn't there. Okay. So all we're doing is you're going to come into a PowerShell step. Uh, the package that we did download uh, for the KB is still downloaded. Uh, so install specific KB. So I'm just going to use that script that we already downloaded for deploy. Okay. Open that up, and then down here in the parameters, you have to just manually put in the KB article. Okay, the uh, number. I'm, I'm going to go just copy that because I'm not going to remember any of that. And while you're mm -hmm. doing this, Jordan, I'd like to highlight that this is just PowerShell that's being ran. Yep. And mm -hmm. if you check out the article that we have for this written by Chad, shout out Chad, it has a copy of the script so you can copy and paste in Connect and get set up just like Jordan is mm -hmm. and install specific KBs and do mm -hmm. whatever you got to do. Right. So once you make this, all you're going to do is go edit this script and change the You just got to change yeah, the KB okay. there. Yeah, just remember Makes what sense. you named it, otherwise you're going to make it twice like I did. Okay. Makes sense. All right, so now so I'm just going to save it, and now that... Package is built, it's KB, Yep. and so that will do the same thing and it will allow you to do the KB thing, it's just we can't provide that one by default because the standard package isn't available yet. Yeah, okay. All right, so, so pretty simple. Yeah, but that's, yeah, that's for all the updating, there's a lot of value there, but I think what's missing for most people is things like reporting and how to track and how you know, make, know you're sending the right machine. Yeah. And that's where inventory in particular shines. I'm going to show something on that so we can, uh, how you can track that within inventory. Yeah. Build collections, build reports, you can have all that going. Yeah, because I want to automate it, Jordan. I don't want to open up the output log for each machine. Can you make it so I don't have to do that? Can we just make a collection on this? Absolutely, we can. Okay, let's do that. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is scan profiles. There is a default or a scanner we've built in the PowerShell scanners, mm -hmm. uh, GitHub, which is right here. Uh, so this has a whole bunch of pre-built scanners. One of those is similar to this, where it goes through and gets missing KBs. Uh, so if you're looking to download that, if you have Git on your machine, it's just this line here, Git uh, clone. The only thing you might want to change is C PowerShell scanners is the location it's going to save everything that it pulls down. If you have a specific location, like a file share you want to save it, you just change that end part of the line. But that's going to download all of the pre-built scanners we have. So Andrew, is that something you'll put in the comments in case they need that? 
I'm um, sorry, I was reading the comments. Put what in the comments? Uh, just where the PowerShell scanner repo is. Oh, yep, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. All right, so I'm just going to control I to import. I'm going to go PowerShell scanners, and am I in the right area? Let's see, PowerShell scanners, I was not in the right area. So we're going to go through and find get Windows update history, not history. So available. Get, get available Windows updates, and it's just an XML file. Mm -hmm. We're going to open that, and that is going to build the scanner for us there. Uh, there is one part on that scanner, which I'm going to open up just a bit so we can showcase. And I mentioned earlier where if you have WSS, this can point to it. If not, you can point to internet and get a workaround. Okay. In our scenario, we do have WSS. I actually tried to use go around WSS when we have it enabled with policy, and it gave me a 503 error. So if you have a group policy that's pointing to your WSS server to grab the updates, you have to do this step. Yeah, so if you have okay. WSS, well, even if you have WSS, if you don't have a policy forcing it, mm -hmm. you can still go around it. But if you have a policy saying this is what does the updates, mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to get around it. Okay. So just the parameter for that one is just dash WSS. And that says, basically says we do have WSS point to that, and that's going to tell us what's been approved within there. Okay. All right. So now that we have that built, we're going to, we'll just scan them all. Let's do it. Let's break it. Scan the collection, and while this is running, do we have any other questions that have come? And in? you're going to scan, and then you're going to scan with PowerShell get available Windows updates. Yes. Okay. Want to make sure we understand that. Yes, we do have a couple questions. All right. Let's hmm. see. All right. Is there a way in inventory to create a dynamic collection or create a report <laughs> to show which computers don't have a specific KB? I'm pretty sure you just did that. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're in the process we're of doing the Windows Update one in particular. Okay. So by running the scan, these are the KBs that are missing from Quad. And then it gives you the title, size, and description, and everything. Mm -hmm. So every machine you run against this is going to build a new table for the specific PowerShell scanner. And we can call upon that table for reports and collections so we can track it. Okay. So on this one, we have just the one machine. We're going to do one example here. So if you're looking for one KB in particular you're worried about, uh, I wish I could copy that table, but you can't. One second, I'm going to go back and, and copy one. Oh, let's just do this. It's over. So we're going to build a new dynamic collection. That didn't go the way I wanted. That's okay. New dynamic collection. So if you come down here on the computer table, you're just going to change it down there. You can see the get available Windows update. Mm -hmm. That is that gets added once you run the scan for the first time, and that becomes an available. Uh, you have to run the scan table. first time though before you yep. see that. Okay. So don't panic if you don't see that. Okay. Yep. All right. So now that we have that, let's see if we can't. Uh, get one of the KBs here so I can type it out manually. I, nothing ever goes wrong manually, right? That's right. So, KB... You were talking so fast the stream dropped, I guess. Oh, I broke it? <laughs> it's back, but... <laughs> Four, five, seven, seven, five, eight, six. Is that right? Yep. All right, we're gonna name that, uh, that one KB. That <laughs> one. All right, so that's gonna build a collection of every machine that's missing that specific KB. So if you're looking to push out one KB, Mm -hmm. You have the collection right here. Okay. So you want to grab the same. I'm actually going to open that up and copy this time because I'm not retyping. I'm, I'm happy I got it once. So you're going to go back to deploy. Mm -hmm. You're going to change that to the new KB that we just listed. Uh, save that and then deploy. Once you can set up a schedule for a certain mm -hmm. KB or how you want to do that, but we're just doing a one-off to show it. We're going to go to inventory and specify the collection, collection. we just built. That one KB. That one KB. Yep. See if I can't find it. That one KB. Open. It pulls in the, every machine that we've scanned that's missing that one. Deploy now and that will send that out to everybody. It's a thing of beauty. Mm -hmm. So, Jordan, one thing I, I really liked about this, and I know we're just doing a deploy once, but a situation I had a lot of times with my boss would he would say like, hey, is this patched everywhere? And creating a collection based on computers that don't have the patch, combining it with um, an automated schedule, you can answer that question forever and kind of really automate away your problems as you go. So awesome, very powerful stuff right yeah. there. Yep. So then we have that one so it can go through and it can individual. Yeah. KB, but if we want to catch like all machines that have a KB that's waiting to install, we're just going to build a new dynamic collection for yeah. that. After this, we're going to show reporting because the collection is kind of nice for some sort mm -hmm. of gathering. Reporting is where you can get to some really cool stuff on, mm -hmm. on tracking. Yeah. Well, and I'm thinking CYA, just like Andrew said, your boss is bugging you. Are you running this? I'm like, yes, I am. And here's your report now, but stop bothering me. That's what I like. So this one, I'm just going to put KB and I'm going to name this one Clever Title. 
Yep. Perfect. Because apparently I'm, I'm running out. So this is basically every machine that has a KB. So out of the 47 machines we have total in our lab, we have 38 machines that still need an update somewhere. Okay. And you can see Claude that just finished uploading, so it's scanning again. Love it. So another thing you can do on this one, the default scan after deployment is the standard. You actually could come in here and change the scan after scanner to be that uh, PS Windows one. So once it's done installing that KB, mm -hmm. it's going to rerun the Windows update oh, uh, that's collection. Cool. So it will update the collection automatically. I love that. Set it and forget it. Yeah. I can find out where I put the, the scanner that's running. It's going to be in properties. And this uh, scanning. Default as. scan profile. Yeah, it's to the right. To the right, to right, the right, right there. Go right. I'm, I'm right. Oh, right there. Okay, yeah. so. I think you have to unselect program default. Yeah. There yeah, you so go. scanner default, you can come in here and you can select the. Uh, okay, that's cool. Updates. I love that. Yeah, so that way instead of scanning everything, all the stuff you're worried about, you're always mm -hmm. going to look, make sure that, that KB that we scan is missing. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. Okay, all cool. All right. So now this. This last part I want to go into and is the reporting, mm -hmm. and this is this is where stuff gets, in my opinion, really cool because this is where you can see uh, just kind of a live view of what you're missing as well as your management can see it, so mm -hmm. they're happy. Yeah. So we're just going to come in and do a new report. All right. So the first is columns. This is basically what shows up in the report. This doesn't filter it down. This is just what shows up. And so we're going to come in and grab from the table we had the available windows updates and we're grabbing the KB mm -hmm. as well as the description just because having more information never hurt anybody. And description. And then let's see. So if we run this right now without fine tuning anything it actually come out here and it's going to show everything out there, but mm -hmm. we're going to actually do a little bit more fine tuning. We're going to filter to make sure that we're grabbing what we're looking for. Okay. So we're going to go back into define, into filters, and it's going to be the same thing. We're looking at the table we just built with our scan, the Windows updates. Mm -hmm. KB, and we're just going to say all Windows updates. So it's going to start with a KB on that one. So we run that report, and this is a report of machines and the KBs they're missing. This is kind of nice, but if you come over to where the KB is, right click on that, and you say group by this column. You can see every KB. So we have 34 machines that are missing this particular KB. And you can open that up and you can see what each machine is in there. That's cool. So if you want to see, like, why someone, this one is missing from a lot of machines, you can mm -hmm. do some research or you can just push it out. Push it out real quick and get done with it. Awesome. So having this is just a quick way to get a report. You can set this up to an auto report. So if you have the, we'll, we'll go into the, back into the scanners. If you have that set on the schedule, mm -hmm. you can have the report to run 30 minutes or an hour after that, depending. Mm -hmm. I mean, on how safe you want to be. Mm -hmm. And you can have this report automatically go out to a share where anyone can access it. Yep. So anyone can go in and they can see the data on how your current environment is. Yep. Yeah. And you can do it monthly. And, you know, as you said, mm -hmm. put it in a file and then boom, you have a lot more answers you can give your boss without having to work harder at all. Yep. Yeah. It's, I, I do love that report and being able to automate it because none, none of us want to talk to management. <laughs> Ever. This has been my favorite week because Kelly's not here. He can't make me do anything. <laughs> Have, having reports so they can look at the pretty pictures. Yes. To save us the conversation. We all want that. Right, if we go back to our scan profiles, we have Windows updates. Uh, you come in here just with triggers. If you want to set this, right now it runs when you run it. But you could have this set this weekly at, I don't know, we'll say Thursday at 11 works for me. Yeah. And then it's set to all Link computers to right now. But Let's link it. But, well, the problem is, and this is where a big one comes in, is servers versus workstations. Updating is just different for those. Yeah, we want to exclude the servers. So you can come <laughs> into this collection, and you can have it run at a certain time for servers and a certain time for Windows and keep them separate. Mm -hmm. The Overall, the PowerShell module will work the same. But as a general rule, you don't want to update servers and Windows at the same time. Mm -hmm. So this one, we're going to every Thursday see what servers are missing. And that one, they'll update all your servers on that one. And it'd be cool. the same thing for collections and reports. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a good way to define because I don't, I don't care at what time of day I'm updating Windows. It usually is not a big deal. Servers bigger deal is a, is, is a very big deal. So mm -hmm. that one, having a, separating out servers from workstations is a big deal. There's pre-built collections 
for servers and workstations. I'd recommend using those within that one and separate, maybe build two different workflows, but that way you're treating your servers as they should be treated as different as uh, within a certain time frame where, mm -hmm. I, like I said, with, with the workstations, I don't care. Yeah, that's cool. All right, did we get any other questions come in? Yes, we did. All righty. Does Connect address the issue of laptops that go back and forth between wireless and wired and don't always show a consistent DNS record? Uh, absolutely, because Connect uses an agent, agent. So the agent checks in mm -hmm. with the web portal we have there. So no matter what the DNS is, doesn't change it. That's just going to, the agent will check into here and all the uh, information will be relevant. Yeah, as long I mean, as it has an online connection. Yeah, I was going to say, is there Connect an issue that you've had with Connect, or is it just a question they're asking from the past? Because, yeah, well, I'm not aware of an issue. So a lot with inventory is if there's DNS issues, if there's a lot of logging on, that changes. Mm -hmm. It can get kind of weird. Mm -hmm. But where Connect uses an agent instead of the DNS, it does bypass that. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Got a couple more. Okay. Let's see. Is there going to be an update to the collection library that tracks the latest monthly update? Um, not, not so that I know of. Should be in the collection library. Um, for like each uh, OS, there should be a latest. Oh, for the Windows update. So the, yeah, we do have in the collection library at the top. Yeah. Yeah, we're going all the way to the collection library. What do we say? Windows updates. So we do have the Windows updates workstations there. If that's what you mean, but this one tracks mostly uh, cumulative updates. Mm -hmm. These are non-cum updates that yeah. we're dealing with. Yeah, so this one will let you know which ones have the latest, and then you also expand, so you have the cumulative updates, and then you can separate by 32 and 64. Uh, so that one is rebuilt there. I don't know if we're planning to take it a step past that. I don't know of any plans to. Mm -hmm. Sweet. I think that's what he was looking for. Chad answered his question. It said he okay. looked over those. This changes things. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. So. All right. Do we have any other questions? We do. We've got one more. Okay. All right. Um, is there any plan to ever integrate PDQ Connect into the PDQ desktop app, or will those always stay separate? So, so they the, said no, but <laughs> as, as far as I know, they're going to be separate just because the the main draw for deployment for a long time was the fact that it was agentless mm -hmm. for environments where there's not a lot of remote. The agentless is extremely valuable. Mm -hmm. By bringing them together, we're just adding the agent everywhere, which kind of changes it changes licensing and it changes how it functions. So. As I understand it, those are always going to be separate. Mm -hmm. But if that changes, I'm, I'm sure we'd have a, a webcast announcing that. Maybe a couple. Right. As time goes on, we'll we'll find more and more features that you you find that you enjoy and deploy in inventory. Uh, they'll be part of the PDQ Connect uh, feature base feature set. So okay. Um, Paul wants a step-by-step -step for this following the presentation. It goes really fast. I know, Paul, it does. It, I keep telling him. He's does. so smart. You can't follow him. Well, we have we have 30 minutes, unfortunately. I mean, if there's any part you want me to dive back into, I'm happy to, but at a certain point, they cut me out. Should we make a video? We can do a video on a step-by-step. -step. Yeah, that's a good video for next week. All right, and then I saw the another question. Takes 60 minutes. Yeah. yeah, I saw another uh, question in there about uh, feature upgrades, mm -hmm. like going from 20 H2 to 21 H2. Mm -hmm. And that varies. For a lot of those, there's something called an enablement package. It's a very small KB that you can use that. You can use that to upgrade all the features. Uh, if the update you're looking for and that jump uses the enablement, deploy would do that no problem. That goes very fast, not a problem. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a jump that's outside the scope of the enablement package, you can make deploy work, but the reporting's not going to be ideal for that one because without the agent, it disconnects long enough that there's no... Uh, six second. So we we think that that is um, YouTube because um, <laughs> dang it, Chase! Because <laughs> we're getting an excellent connection swear. on our on our end. We're getting excellent connection, so we think it's a YouTube problem today. So sorry about that, guys. But we're just about done anyway. Um, we had a quick little one there in the chat. Jordan said, "Can this point to a local repository?" Uh, I don't know if you want to just hit well, that one real quick. Well, I asked Chad that, and it is pointing to the Microsoft. It, it is one time by one time, so I don't think it's possible. So if, if you wanted to, you had to avoid something like that online. If you get uh, if you get the PS Windows update approved, you could do a one-time push out to make sure every computer has that. It's just part of the default. Mm -hmm. 
And then you can avoid the online by pointing it to the WSS. And that way you're only looking at your WSS to control oh, okay. it. okay. So it is a way to do a workaround, uh, but it's one of those, either way the module it uses is mm -hmm. going to be online. So if that's where your hurdle is, you're going to have to get approval for that module. But you could do a one-time push for that mm -hmm. and okay. be fine. And... I, and I apologize for the talking fast. I, I mentioned I was nervous for the first time. No, it's what I always tell you. You guys, I always tell him this. He's like, well, what's so hard? And I'm like, it's not hard for you. That doesn't mean normal humans understand you. Yeah, so moderating speed is something actually I, I've been getting better at. I just, I was nervous again. No, I, it's because it's so easy for you. You just think everyone is as smart as you, but I keep telling you they're not. All right, All right so I will work on being slower. As far as a step-by-step, I think that's a good idea for a video. I do too. It's a good Not, video. The entire thing might be a bit large of a scope, but if we could do different components, like one, here's the inventory reporting section, here's the you know the collection reports, and another one about how to yeah. do it within deploy. We could do a couple of videos where yeah. it's step by step. Maybe it's not. Well, starting with, do you have the right module? Because remember when you came yes. to my office and you were like, well, where is it? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't even have the right stuff on mine. Yeah. So, uh, so, so I, th we'll I think start from zero. Uh, <laughs> companion videos are a good idea. I'll, I'll get working on those pretty quick, just because I don't want. You could also, you could also watch this at half speed. Half speed, like yeah. Jordan bit videos. That's cute. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that idea a lot because this I think is very valuable. What mm -hmm. Chad built is fantastic, it is. and I want as many people to use it as can, just because I think there's a lot of value. Yeah. So companion videos are a good idea, and I think we'll we'll get those added to our our timeline for sure. Yeah, agreed. Okay, let's wrap it up. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I'm sorry if we had a couple of disconnects. I know there's a lot of good information in here. Hopefully, this at least gets you started. Uh, the main things, remember, the PS Windows Update module is there. Uh, the inventory is extremely valuable, especially for reporting and having collections. And hopefully, this helps you get a bit more control over your updating, which is always a hassle for sysadmins. Yeah, and try it and connect, too. Yep. It's just different. Yep. And for PDQ, I'm Jordan. I'm Tara. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching PDQ Live today. We hope you learned something valuable or were just entertained by uh, Jordan and Tara's shenanigans. For, uh, don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications for our channel. We've got webcasts every week and videos coming out all the time. Send any questions you have to webcast at pdq.com, and we will see you all next Thursday. Wow, that was professional. Thank you. I do a podcast.